welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed that little bit of camera porn there, but today I'm going to be talking about the Zeiss Icon Netar 515 with the crazy prices out there right now for medium format cameras and the growing difficulty at even finding some of them these days, you might be looking for alternatives. Created in the 1930s, the Netar series comes in different models and different formats like 6x6, 6x9. Uh, this one, the 515, comes in 645 format. This model specifically is the third model in the Netar series and it was made in 1937 and it's compact it fits in the palm of your hand it gives you 16 exposures per roll so it's economic and it was built by Zeiss Icon so you know it's made really well so what more can you ask for in a medium format camera or any camera really so it's really simple to use you press a button to pop it open the viewfinder pops open and it's two squares that you compose your picture through. I mean, it's not the viewfinder is not connected to your lens, obviously. You would just roughly compose your picture through that and keep in mind that it's offset from your lens. The film advance is on the bottom and it's just a key that you turn, like on a lot of folding cameras from that time. There is a window, a red window, that's covered by a shade so that you don't have to worry about light getting in and hitting your film. Some of the models don't come with that, so that's a really nice feature on the 515. The Netar 515 also has a Novar and a Stigmat lens, so it doesn't have the Carl Zeiss lens like some of the other. I think the Icon has the Zeiss, the Zeiss lens, but it's still a great lens. It's a 75mm lens, 4.5 um, is the widest aperture on it. The shutter speeds, aperture, and focus scale are all located next to each other on the front of the camera for easy access, and the shutter cocking lever is also right here on top where ne next to your uh, aperture and shutter speeds so you would just cock the lever and then turn and press the shutter release it's funny that the shutter release is on the left um, usually on cameras they're on the right but on this camera the shutter release is on the left um, I think there is a timed release lever under here but I heard that they're pretty delicate on these old cameras so I didn't even want to mess with that but yeah real simple camera simple features nothing you don't need so now in my opinion there are two only two downfalls to this camera and that is that the shutter speeds only go as fast as 1 1 75th of a second and it is scale focus. Uh, if you've read any of my, my articles on my website and my experiences, I've had horrible experiences with scale focusing cameras, but um, it's just something I haven't gotten the hang of. But there are remedies to those two things that I will go over. So after I wasted a roll of film and none of the photos came in focus because I was testing it out and trying to see, uh, trying to estimate distances from different subjects around the house or outside. Uh, nothing came in focus at all. I threw it out and I was frustrated and I thought, oh, another, another scale focus uh, disaster for me again. So I was really discouraged, but I contacted Mike Ekman, who lent me the camera, and Alex Lux, and they both gave me some advice and they said to set the scale focus to the red dot and the aperture to the red dot and take pictures outside at faraway subjects and as in Mike's words he said if you want to take any closer photos use a different camera so <laughs> that was good uh, good advice for me so I used a roll of Fomapan 400 because it was the cheapest and only film I had on hand then I shut set the aperture to uh, between f8 and f11 where the red dot was and then I set my scale between 8 and 15 meters where the red dot is and I went for a walk with Kelsey and took some photos. Now because I uh, because I did have 400 speed film in there, uh, 1 1 75th of a second was a little bit of a problem because it was light, you know, bright outside, but I um, I used like uh, the concept of Sunny 16 and as I went, you know, from picture to picture, I discerned from the brightness if I needed to move the aperture up to f22 or back to f8 and um, it worked out that way. So 
to remedy that, that lower shutter speed, they give you a small uh, aperture of f22. So they kind of counterbalance each other if you're in that situation. So I shot those pictures on that walk and I was really happy to find that my entire roll had come in focus. So I'm going to show you some of those photos. So this first photo of my neighbor and his old Mustang. I was really happy to see this came in focus and sharp. I really love the shadows and everything. It didn't come blown out despite it being uh, ISO 400 with only one 175th of a second. Like I said, I would just close down that aperture every time I was in a situation like that and it worked really well. Here in this picture of the sewer you can see there is some fall off on the lens. Here in the foreground it's blurry and when I would turn the camera landscape it, then the left side would be blurry so I'm guessing there's some fall off on the lens. I'm not sure what that, if that's what it means. You can let me know in the comments but it was only on one side of the lens. Here in this photo, this is my favorite photo of this tree and the branches were kind of sweeping out at, at us. The contrast, I, I love, I really like Fomapan, it's growing on me um, and it's great to test out cameras like this because it's a cheap option but you can see it's got nice contrast. The grain isn't too pronounced. And here's another tree similar to that one with the branches. I was surprised the branches came in sharp. I was afraid they weren't gonna come in focus. And you can see, even though I wasn't using a wide open aperture, the background of the tree is completely out of focus as if this was a portrait of the tree. Then here's another view of the tree. And I was mostly just taking photos of the light because the sun was pretty high and so I was trying to capture some shadows to make these boring subjects a little more interesting. <laughs> but again, you can see that the focusing area is pretty narrow. Even, even at f8 to f22, it's pretty narrow. The trees around it are out of focus. Here's another view of the trees and this is my neighbor's house. They have the most beautiful flowers and trees. I'm always taking pictures <laughs> of their landscape. They're probably thinking, what the heck is she doing? But um, I just love the tall trees here. They didn't come in that great of focus here. Only a certain area in the middle came in focus. Here's a photo of me and Kelsey in our shadows. Um, I really like that picture. That's us taking a walk. And then on the way back, the other side of the Mustang. And again, you can see up here on the top of the tree is out of focus. Um, but the car at least is in focus so either way I really loved these photos and this camera is definitely one I would love to have in my collection for taking walks like this when you there has been many times where I thought oh I wish I had a medium format camera with me just so I could get a better you know higher quality photo of that <laughs> and um, that a 35 millimeter camera just wouldn't capture and this one fits in your pocket and that's exactly what I'm looking for that's why Mike sent me that's why Mike sent me this camera to try out because I wanted something small that shot medium format that I could put in a pocket of my coat or in my purse or whatever and even though it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of a Mamiya 645 or a Pentax 67 it still gives you everything you need uh, you know in and it gives you medium format in a small compact you know and affordable that's like the number one thing it's affordable that's that's the hardest thing to find these days with medium format cameras is to find something that's affordable but it gives you that option so and even with the two downsides for me they were downsides for me they may not be for you but the low shutter speed I was able to remedy that with the uh, bigger aperture the f22 that really came in handy and the scale focus, like I said, I used the red dots, so that helped me out, and um, everything came in focus, but if you guys know any tips or any better way to learn how to scale focus with other subjects other than everything uh, far away, I would love to hear how you guys do it, because I'm sure there's somebody out there who's really good at scale focusing. I've tried um, carrying a tape measure around with me, but that kind of ruined the whole experience for me. I didn't want to keep <laughs> flinging that out. It, it, it made me not want to do it at all. So um, maybe you guys have some tips, or maybe I just need a lot more practice, but I think this is definitely a camera I will want to get one day to carry around with me for when me and Kelsey go on walks and I have that option to take 16 photos on medium format. Yeah, so the Netar 515 
compact, affordable, made by Zeiss. Great option for you if you're looking for a medium format camera. So let me know in the comments what you think. If you liked this video, please let me know by giving a thumbs up, by hitting subscribe, and by talking with me down in the comments. I always like hearing from you guys. And of course, until next time, stay motivated and keep shooting.